So, let's talk about the GT Live controversy that happened recently and has, from what I've seen, died down as I initially expected. I When this first popped up, I was like, yeah, this is going to last a couple of weeks and then after that, nobody's really going to care about it. And that's what happened. So far, I know it's completely died down. Nobody gives a shit anymore. Um, and it, uh, because of that, I now want to give my opinion because now, well, nobody really cares. And now people are going to be more open to hearing a different opinion. Now, in my why did um, dead, uh, Deadlock, uh, you know, fail, Game Theory's Deadlock fail, I mentioned this and I also mentioned that uh, um, that video was in, uh, 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 well, I was planning out that video before um, this controversy ever came out. And uh, now, um, and I didn't want to like make a video on it back then because I felt like it, uh, I should have like, you know, saved it until, you know, people had calmed uh, their shit and uh, would think reasonably about this. But I did mention that I thought people were making mountains out of a molehill here. And I still stand by that. It Right, so if you don't know what happened, um, Game Theory has a has three channels. The main channel, Game Theory, which has been around for years now. Uh, I think early 2010, maybe 2012, it's been around since then -ish. And the... Uh, uh, film Theory, who has only been around for about two, three years now, and GT Live, which I think has been around about the same amount of time as Film Theory, but I never really paid much attention to that because I'm not a big fan of live streams, period. So, um, I just don't watch many live streams. So, this controversy has to do with GT Live. GT Live uh, is just uh, it's just Matt Pat and uh, his uh, wife. Uh, Jen, I think. Uh, no, that's actually. Ah, uh, right. I should probably should look at what I've anyway, 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 it's Matt Pat and his wife uh, um, playing video games, like Sister Location, which is actually one of the few I have actually seen, and. Uh, uh, and uh, actually, and uh, you know, you, I could probably, and I have my criticisms of GT Live myself, like beyond me just not liking uh, live streams in uh, sister location, their reactions seemed a bit over the top because the jump scares weren't really that scary, even for Five Nights at Freddy's, especially being as we just had Five Nights at Freddy's 4, which can still get me from time to time. Uh, but anyway, th this has this has nothing. Well, it has something to do with. Anyway, um, they were playing this game. I can't remember the name of the game. Um, but the the name of the game really doesn't matter that much. So playing this game, it it's art style and it, uh, sort of how it does everything pretty much is very similar to Undertale, created uh, by Toby Fox, who surprisingly hasn't chimed in at all on this so far. I know. Um, so, if you don't know how their live streams are set up, basically, and my pat himself has uh, admitted this, all that him and his wife do is turn up and play the games. Because they have a massive team sorting everything out who they have personally trained, probably. I don't know if they did personally train them or they went to somewhere like Skillshare and learned everything from there. But they sort out all of the tags, the title, uh, the description and the de um, they basically do research on the game just in case you know they need to know anything about it which is just like yeah that seems reasonable because two people you know probably can do all of that and uh, keep up a constant you know live constant series of live streams so seems reasonable but to some people this is not reasonable they uh, because in the, while uh, in the, this game they were playing, the people they had hired had put tags like Undertale and Undertale Two, 
and Delta Rune and Undertale 2 is uh, a tag commonly used for Delta Rune because it is this it is frequently seen as a sequel to Undertale even though it is not story wise a sequel anyway um and uh, a lot of people were up in arms about this and it's like what but why though because th this was a smaller game so just having uh, tags that are literally just that game not it's not going to be promoted to many people so um it would just basically be well it would get it would introduce it to more people but not a lot but giving it the undertale tags would basically expose it to a larger larger audience so that would mean that would not only mean a bigger audience for gt live but also the game itself and it's not like they were putting uh, completely unrelated tags like i said this game was very stylized in the same style as undertale and delta room so giving it tags so that would uh, you know on of undertale and delta room to promote it, to get it promoted to people who like Undertale and Deltarune, yeah, that's not a bad thing in my opinion. It's like it's not like they put like FNAF, Mario Galaxy 2, or Mario Odyssey, Legend of Zelda: Breath of the Wild tags on there. They put relevant tags, so I really don't get why people were miffed off of that. Another problem people had and. This is, uh, this, and I think this was the biggest problem because I think this problem led to the tag problem because after this problem rose up, somebody decided to look at the tags and you know so oh, they complain about the tags, and this is basically what started off this entire controversy, um, pretty much. And this is how I, and this was the main thing that convinced me this was only going to be one of those small controversies that lasted a week or two and wouldn't last outside of the month. And that, that and that is, Matt Pat was given the a the wrong name for the developer. I was similar but not the same. And it's just like that is legitimately the most pathetic thing I've ever seen anybody get angry about ever. It's just like. Oh, they sort of got the name a little bit wrong, and this is literally the first time this has happened throughout all of their GT lives. I mean, it's just like there's pathetic, and then there's so pathetic that you're literally expecting perfection constantly. Pathetic level of pathetic, and this is that level of pathetic. It's just like. Yes, I'm not a big fan of GT Live, but I'm not going to expect them to get the name of every single developer right every single time. You have to give them a little bit of wiggle room, wiggle room to make one or two mistakes. Because if you start applying uh, this level of, uh, um, you know, standards to every YouTube channel, there are channels that have done much worse than this because this is basically nothing, and yet they've gained they've gone off for, off with very little. Like um, off the top of my head, PewDiePie, um, he played a game called Bear Simulator, and he basically trashed on it because it wasn't Goat Simulator, even though this would have been in development longer before Goat Simulator even uh, released. So, because Goat Simulator was a relatively new game back then, um, and it was open, be it was a open beta, and a lot of other people didn't compare this to Goat Simulator, and they had a lot of fun on it. But because of how hard PewDiePie trashed it, the game developer stopped developing the game, and the world lost a really good fun game. He got off practically scot free. For this is in my earlier days of YouTube, so I wasn't as um, you know, I, I wasn't as subscribed to many pe so many as people as many people as I am now, and that, uh, I didn't have as much information. But from what I f what I saw back then, he suff he had suffered very few consequences. Like yes, there were people who were like, "Dude, you're in the wrong here," but he, in the end of the day, 
there was no major outcry like this. There were there weren't fans raging about him basically trashing a guy's game so hard that he gave up on it. Um. And in my opinion, that is a lot worse than anything Game Theory has done here. Um, a lot of people was like, Matt Pad should uh, like double check everything uh, that his uh, employees do, and it's just like, no. As an employer, you should never do that. Like, if you like with new employees, yes, good idea because they're probably going to make mistakes. But with your seasoned employees. That is the worst thing you could possibly do. Because here's why. You undermine them. If you keep on looking over their shoulders, they're going to think that you don't trust them. And they're going to think that you don't trust them to do the basic the simplest things. And that's gonna lower morale. Leading to a lower quality product. And uh, then you're gonna and then, you know, it's just gonna be an endless loop of you having to keep an eye on them because they, the product is getting worse and worse and, and it's getting worse and worse because their morale, morale is getting lower and lower because they think you don't trust them to do the simplest things. And I know I'm not exactly a big businessman, I'm just a 20 year old in my bedroom making YouTube videos as a hobby and a bit, little bit of fun sometimes with my friend coming around. But even I know that, even I know that if you constantly keep on checking everything your employees do, it is going to lower more employee morale. Because they're not, because they're gonna just, they're not gonna like you because they're not gonna like that you constantly check, look, you're constantly looking over their shoulders, checking everything they do. And the worst case scenario, that's gonna make them think that they can't do anything right. Especially with new employees. Like if you treat it, if a new employee comes in and then they've been there a while and you just constantly just like keep on checking up on them, they're gonna think that they haven't gotten any better since they first got there. So they think that even though they have got, they probably have gotten better, they're probably thinking that they haven't. Again, lowering their morale and lowering their, you know, the product that, the quality product, quality of the product they're outputting. <laughs> anyway, um, this r didn't really blow up much in the tele went to Twitter where basically um, the developers developer of the game is like you got my name wrong and he's like yeah sorry about that you know things happen you know he, Map had to honestly apologize for that and what I will admit here he did go on damage control a bit on Twitter, um, cause he was he did use a li he he there was a little bit of a weird salad some of his tweets and it wasn't completely legalese but you could definitely tell that he was making this to try and calm people down, but you could definitely tell as well that he took it seriously. He took uh, this, uh, you know, people being upset about this seriously, which is more than I would have done. It's just like, dude, I got you, I got the name of the company wrong. That's one small thing. Like, that's the tiniest thing ever. And I, I didn't even get it wrong, wrong. It was one of my employees that told me the wrong name. So, and he could have, he, he could have easily passed that off to what to one of his employees, probably Jason, because um, what little I do know is there's a meme on GT Live. Hashtag blame Jason and he never even once even jokingly muttered you know put on Twitter hashtag blame Jason That's how you know he was taking it seriously. He wasn't joking. He wasn't that uh, you know, you know just dismissing them He was legitimately, you know talking and addressing uh, their uh, you know complaints it's like yeah, he didn't. He does. He, within all honesty, he didn't really need to do that. All he really needed to do, in my opinion, is say sorry for getting the, the publisher's name wrong, and they could have left it. You know, people, it would have died down. Um, but no, he went on and uh, um, actually explained that uh, why everything was the way it was, and then 
it's just like, yeah, he, I don't, I'm not going to say he did nothing wrong, like, um, like I said, he, he was very legalese in how he was on Twitter, um, and the, the, his employee did get the name of uh, the uh, publisher wrong, which, yeah, that's not a good thing, but people were acting as if, oh, this is the end of uh, Game Theory, they're so corrupt and only care about the money. Like, I, I'll even have to admit, I, even though I have defended Velocify a couple times on this channel, I do quite, I do disagree with him quite a bit on this uh, subject. Um, and yeah, it's just like, this was nothing basically. The, like, sure there was something, the tiniest thing there, but he apologised for that. Like, um, I, the, one of the things I, uh, complaints I hear the most about Game Theory is that he's not humble. But he's humble enough to apologise for the smallest mistake that he himself didn't even make. I don't know how that's not humble. And he constantly makes self-deprecating jokes. Now, you could argue whether or not that is kind of humble. Like, he constantly makes jokes about how he makes bad puns or how he's, uh, or how he basically has an emotional dependence on Coke, Diet Coke. Um, and it, uh, yeah, you could say this that that shows a little bit of humbleness, but you know, it's well, you could you could argue no, sorry, wrong one, wrong way around. You could argue that it's not him being humble, but it's just him making a joke, and uh, he doesn't actually think those are flaws with himself. But it's sort of one of those things where you could argue both ways. I'll. You could argue that it is him legitimately just like, hey, these are my flaws, lol. You know, you know, not only acknowledging them, but accepting them, which sometimes is good, sometimes is bad. Like, it's good with like small flaws, like emotional dependency on coke and the, his habit to make bad puns. Um, but not, uh, but not good with like, when your flaw is like, you're a drug addict or, so, or an alcoholic or a smoker or something. Um, but, like I said, this was making a mountain out of a molehill. Um, there's just no reason to really get that upset. It's like, yeah, I don't blame the company for wanting to get an apology on Twitter for... Uh, um, you know, getting the name wrong, just like, hey, uh, you got my our name wrong, and uh, then you know, my pal's like, oh, sorry about that. And then that should have been the end of it. Like, seriously, everything else is pretty much excusable. The tags, again, just there to get the video more views and the game more exposure, and they weren't completely unrelated tags. Like, if it, oh. Talking about Five Nights at Freddy's, before I forget, um, the whole legalese thing, I think that came after Five Nights at Freddy's creator Scott Corfin actually heavily criticised him and criticised Matt Pat and was like, hmm, yeah, this is a little bit uh, awkward because if you didn't know, Matt Pat and his wife have always been very supportive of Scott and his uh, work, um, even the game that Scott himself was disappointed in, FNAF World, those two, you know, they uh, quite enjoyed that game and played it on GT Live, even though the ba of the bad reviews, and I think they even got it when they, when they had to pay for it before it became free to play, so they were one of the people with the uh, um, big, most rights to hate the game, and yet they're like, no, we love this game, Scott, you did good. You know, they were very supportive of him. Yet, when uh, the instant that Matt Pat makes the smallest mistake, Scott uh, jumps on uh, that opportunity to uh, kick uh, the guy uh, 
down, well, kick him down basically because there was nothing that really got him down that much. It's just like, you never really know who your friends are until you're in a position of vulnerability. When you're in a position of vulnerability, your true friends will help you, and your fake friends will stab you in the back like Scott Cawthon. Um, like seriously. Um, I'm not saying Scott Cawthon should have gone out of his way to um, defend Matt Pat here. Like, like I said, it was basically nothing. If he, heck, if he didn't mention, if he just stayed quiet, this would have died out even faster than it did initially. Um, I'm just saying, I don't think it's entirely him just saying it to uh, keep him in the public eye, even though he hasn't done anything to put himself in the public eye of late. Um, I don't think it, he did it, you know, to get, get more attention on himself, because as soon as he releases a new a teaser for a new game, everybody's going to be all over that. Just like everybody was all over the new Don't Hug Me, I'm Scared trailer. People are going to eat that shit up. And that uh, he doesn't really need uh, to start uh, a controversy, get involved in a controversy with game theory to keep his relevancy. He might think that and that might have been uh, his uh, motive. I don't know what he thinks. But it's uh, definitely... Uh, you know, a poss it's definitely something he didn't need, and could have easily backfired. To be honest, like I think he did. I think he did that tweet very carefully. Just like went to, you know, leaned on that pair a bit, but not too hard. Um, but I definitely think he should have just stayed silent, like because then. Those two are his, basically his biggest supporters. They have given, uh, you know, they have held up to keep Five Nights at Freddy's alive uh, beyond past the Let's Plays. Like Let's Plays, if or if if it was just Let's Plays, then Five Nights at Freddy's would have died out after everybody just like finished the Let's Plays. But it's the theories. From Matt Pat and the other theory, uh, game theory, uh, you know, YouTubers that kept Five Nights at Freddy's uh, the, the games alive after the let, Let's Plays had ended. Because um, without the theories, uh, the le theories after the Let's Plays, everybody would have just not really cared. Like, well, they, because, you know, they had seen the Let's Play, they know everything about the game, and it's just like, it's the theories that really fueled the fire with Five Nights at Freddy's. Um, so, yeah. Um, mind you, I do think Five Nights at Freddy. The, another thing that I want to mention quickly that Velocify mentioned is that it's not, that game, Game theory is not organic anymore. It's all like, oh, what's popular? I'll make a video on that, and it's just like, eh, I can see that a little bit because, but you can't really blame them. Like, it's sort of the environment YouTube themselves have created. You have to, uh, you know, make a video that is relevant to, so that you so that people watch it, and you know, all the YouTube algorithms and rhythms and all that. Fun, fun stuff, um, and but I do think Five Nights at Freddy's. I don't know if it'll be the last game theory they really were super invested into. Like, it's not like Matt Pat only you know played the games. He read the books, which hit, which even which hit, which not even the fans really like. Well. Um, I remember in one of the Game Theory videos, he mentioned how um, he, uh, I think he, he bought it digitally, and um, and it, and how he bought it, it uh, bought it actually shows you what page other people stopped reading the book on, and uh, people stopped reading Scott's books after the first like couple of chapters, but my pack kept on going on after the chapters. And 
you can under and when Matt Pat reads some of the lines from the Five Nights at Freddy's books, you can understand why people stopped reading. Like, Scott is not an all good author at all. Like, good game developer. Well, good story in game developer. And, you know, game the gameplay is you know de very you know depends on what you you like and don't like. Um, but uh, just no. There, there are some very poorly worded and convoluted stuff in the books. And I'm not saying this just because he went against game theory. I have always thought this. Like, if he had never said anything about game theory, I was just like, yeah, the books are poorly written. And it, uh, um, it took some real grit and determination from Matt Pat to actually get through the books. Um... But yeah, I would definitely say that's unless they get super lucky and like um, a good game, you know, really good game comes out that's really in depth lore and becomes really popular. Unless like Five Nights at Freddy's, unless another one of them, another one of them comes around, I think that Five Nights at Freddy's is, gonna, is going to be the last series they get super invested into, like. Even you could even argue, arguably say Undertale. I, you could say that they are quite invested into Undertale. Like he has done a lot of research and the, the stuff into his Undertale theories, but not on the level of Five Nights at Freddy's. Um, and like the Five Nights at Freddy's theories or not, you have to admit he put a lot of time, effort, and work into making those videos. Um, but yeah. That's basically everything. Tell, well, tell me what you think about like the stuff I mentioned in this video. Did you do you think? Do you agree with me that they that people are just basically making mountains out of molehills here? Do you think that Scott should have kept his mouth shut um, and probably really shouldn't attack two of his biggest supporters, two of the biggest supporters of his games? And but well probably not the books they, they barely mentioned them in the game theory said so they didn't do like a GT live reading that's actually a thing do I wonder if they will make a uh, book theory or novel theory channel hmm that's something anyway I'll see you guys uh, in the next video bye bye also I just want to mention here here quickly pretty much as soon as I ended the video and closed OBS which is why my webcam is not working I can't be bothered to close and reopen OBS until it decides it wants to work um, I just remembered the name of Matt Pat's wife Steph or Stephanie but she usually goes by Steph um, so yeah just want to mention that quickly bye bye